Hi, welcome back. If you're relatively new here, my name is Ashley Sue, and here we talk about BTS midlife mental health and how these things come together. I really thought that when I sat down today, the first thing that I was going to do when I got to film again was to watch another Rise of Bong Tan. But the truth is, is today as I was getting to wash my hair for the first time in a week and feeling a really huge range of emotions that I've been going through for the last week, I am feeling like sad and mad and happy all at the same time. I'm probably gonna talk about things that are uncomfortable and even somewhat controversial. So if anything that I say hits a button for you that makes you feel like, ooh, she's into that, I understand. And you can bow out because there's so many good reactors um, who have huge channel, huge channels and keep things light and airy and happy and non-weird. So. <laughs> Meanwhile, here I am. So let's talk about the giant bruise in the room. I was walking through a parking lot. I already had the kids, thank God, strapped into their car seats. They were safe. Jotting back across the parking lot, uh, I saw an SUV quite a way up, like not super close. But you know, I picked up the pace, threw a little wave, and then realized as I was waving and smiling at them, oh shit, I'm about to trip. I don't remember anything after that exactly until suddenly my mind realizing my eyes are open and everything's black. I don't know why, where am I and why is everything dark? And then I heard my head hit and then I felt my head hit. And I mean, all of this took place in nanoseconds. And then in the seconds that followed, I've, I've realized your brain has a lot of thoughts that happen at the same time. And yeah, one of the very first thoughts I had was, oh shit, blunt head trauma, and this is how I die. And then I immediately thought, I don't wanna go this way. This is not a fun way to go. <laughs> I don't know if there's a fun way to go, but this is not how I wanna go. Now, if you've been part of my journey for a long time here, you know that my journey with BTS actually started with me wanting to die. I had given up hope and definitely when BTS reached in me and grabbed me with their seven voices and the healing sound of their message without me even understanding what they were saying. So it was really bizarre and neat actually to have this moment of, whoop, this is not how I want to go and I don't really want to go. But I also kind of thought, all right, and if I do, then I have, I've been happy. I've lived a happy last year. My kids are in the car safe. Like all these things flickered in my head so fast before I realized I could hear strangers dropping their own F-bombs and yelling from different distances, are you okay? I couldn't move, I couldn't open my eyes. I couldn't move my body. I could talk. They kept asking me if I was okay, what hurt, and I told them everything and I don't know. Slowly I was able to, you know, pry myself up. Um, I talked about it a little bit on Instagram. My immediate thought was just love. Like the amount of love I felt in that experience from utter strangers was really beautiful and really overwhelming and very affirming that people are good. And granted, not all people are good, but people are good. Um, I, I felt really embarrassed. I felt embarrassed over several things. I was able to sit up, get myself to a sitting position before I could open my eyes. And when I opened my eyes, I saw these people around me, most of whom were younger than me, probably in their 20s. And uh, I could tell they didn't know each other for the most part. Men and women, and I could see in their eyes and I could hear it in their voices, genuine concern and hope for me. They really, they really fighting. They really wanted me to be able to get up and be okay. The look in their eyes was love. And that was very beautiful and very powerful. And it made me feel stupid that I had um, burnt some of these wonderful strangers energy by being a woman who fell down. Which taps into something that I also thought <laughs> It also thought that I haven't shared with anybody. Before I could even get up off the ground, I had this thought that I was embarrassing. And that I was embarrassing that, that, that Jimin would be embarrassed by me. Um, what a weird, like lack of self, self-worth moment, uh, thought to have had in that moment. But, you know, a few months ago, I did a video talking about how Pak Chimin helped me love my body and love myself again. As I 
sat on the ground and realized they couldn't put pressure on either arm and I realized that just I hurt in really weird places. I thought how if he saw me then he wouldn't love my body and he wouldn't think that I should love my body. He would think what a feeble, frumpy old woman I was. And I can't walk across a flat parking lot without tripping over myself and getting that badly injured. And, and I just felt so ashamed and embarrassed of my humanness and of my body. <sighs> I felt like I had let Jimin down. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? And then I kind of kept cycling back to seeing the love in these strangers' eyes and feeling how embarrassed they probably felt for me. Just, just stupid insecurities that were cycling in my head. And I just so badly wanted them to feel better, the people who were there to try to help me feel better. So as soon as I was able to get up, I was able to say to them um, how thankful I was for them. Those okay. One of them kept asking me, have you eaten? Have you eaten? And I thought, oh my God, how Korean of you. I'm not sure how familiar some of you are with Korean culture, but um, I think a common to my understanding as I'm learning the Korean language, I don't know if idi idiom is the right word, but a common question they ask to ask if you are well, a sign of love is have you eaten? And I think even specifically, have you eaten rice is sometimes what is asked. It's a question of if you're, if you're well, if you're being taken care of, if you've got a full tummy and feel good. That girl asking me that repeatedly was, it just felt really special and I was thankful for that. So once I was able to get up and move around, I, I just, I kept telling this, okay, I'm gonna be all right, I'm gonna be okay. Landed somehow on my head, which doesn't make sense to me. I'm fairly certain there's some nerve damage because I'm having a hard time moving that side of my face. You know how when the guys talk about watching choreography of theirs and they can tell that someone's moves or the music is off by a beat, I can feel things are off. I can't get that side to move very well still. The nice people who really did not want to leave ways with me, they were really concerned because my head was already swelling on one side. They were begging me not to drive. Anyhow, I ended up calling my husband to come get it. So we're gonna get a little bit dramatic here, but I mean, I think all of this is okay for calling for a little bit of drama, but we're gonna talk about marriage. And, um, and this is always a struggle for me. My husband is not, some creep. So it's weird to talk about having marital issues for a lot of reasons, it's weird. It's hard to in one breath say that I am so thankful for the man that my husband is. I'm thankful that I've known him my entire life and that I'm thankful that he is the father of my children. And then to turn around in the same breath and say that our souls are very much struggling, um, that I feel invisible. I don't want anybody to think about my husband as somehow the villain or me as somehow as the victim. In all the ways that my soul is hurting and feels invisible, I have no doubt his does too. You know, in, in November of 2019, when I first asked for help and told somebody that I planned on not living anymore, I didn't know why I felt that way. Almost exactly one year later, I felt worse because nothing was getting better. I still didn't know why I didn't want to live. I had listened to people tell me for so long that I was broken and that I wanted too much in life. I had spent years in therapy. If you're solely looking at things on paper, it's absolutely foolish to think that I wouldn't want to live anymore unless there was something fundamentally broken and wrong with me. And um, like I said, I didn't know why I didn't want to live. I just knew I didn't want to the day that I sat down and put earbuds in and listened to BTS discography and came back alive, felt something. Purple karaoke and dynamite and then the YouTube algorithm offering me on and black swan it just it changed everything in a single month i suddenly felt seen and heard and i still couldn't figure out why but i, I felt like i was on the right path and over the next year the entirety of 2021 i got to fall in love with the process of getting to know myself and to realize that while there are things in me 
that are wounded and there are things in me that are hungry for healing. Most of what I'm hungry for is connection and what I'm most of hungry for is the freedom to enjoy things and to be me without feeling guilty about things all the time. And I really just wanted to be able to be seen and be heard without being told that what I was saying or what I was doing was wrong. It's crazy because when I look at it, there's nothing that I wanted that was too big or too overwhelming or too needy or clingy or I just want to have honest conversations with people and I just want to be able to talk about feelings with people and I want to be able to tell someone that I love them and know that they feel that. And I want to be able to hold hands and I want to be able to take an impromptu trip to the Waffle House during the night. I want to live not by the clock all the time and I want to dream of places to go and people to meet and none of that is overwhelmingly big or hard or demanding, right? Anyhow, anyhow, it was listening to BTS's music and then listening to BTS in interviews and falling down the compilation rabbit hole and getting to know the personalities and seeing them and run BTS and then finding out the meanings behind their songs. From the beginning, their entire original purpose of speaking up for youth all the way through to speaking for themselves and encouraging people to speak for themselves. And while, while their goal is still the welcome generation and youth as it should be, because we've got to encourage the youth to be stronger and better than we have been and to accept less bullshit and to love themselves from the beginning. While all of that's true, you know, when they first presented that speech to the UNGA, Nam June spoke to a room full of adults to speak their name, to speak their truth, and to love themselves. That's what they, they did for me bit by bit through 2021. They gave me back myself and they gave me permission to know myself. They gave me permission to actually enjoy the things that I enjoy, the things that make me me, even if the people in my life don't necessarily understand what that is. But you know, 2021 was so much more than just that. And we've talked about before, I ended up reading different books that were suggested by them, watching movies that were suggested by them, trying new food, learning a new language and dreaming, getting a passport, going to LA. And I know most of you have no idea how big that is that I chose to go to LA, but I've sat stagnant for a lot of years, increasingly stagnant, because even being bold enough to dream of going somewhere made things uncomfortable, which was just so ludicrous and so ridiculous, but I kept stuffing that down. I kept wrapping blankets around any dream I had, anything, one by one, I just wrapped blankets around it to try to hide it. I didn't want to argue. I didn't want to have confrontation. I didn't want to have struggle. And I kept thinking if I can stuff those things down, everything can be happy. And I waited. I kept thinking that they'll get to the point where they're com they're comfortable and they'll give like a sort of permission, like let's do this, we can do this now because I didn't want to do any of this alone. I have dreams and my dreams involve doing them with the people that I love and experiencing that. And as I stuffed blankets around all of that, I withered, I just withered beyond the point of even recognizing myself anymore. Then it went from, well, you want too much to you're never happy. So I went from being wanty and needy and clingy and dreaming too big to being wanty and needy and clingy and just a Debbie Downer, a chronic, you know, mess of brokenness that if I can fix myself, everyone else can be happy too. You know, we've talked about when you fall in love with BTS and suddenly you start getting all this kickback around you, which surprises you because you fall in love with them so quickly and they make you feel alive. Especially if you've been in a rough place, you can't wait to share that something, like that something is exciting again. And like the ways that you're applying it to your life. I wasn't just sitting there like, hey, everybody needs to see these seven guys. I'm also like, hey, I'm reading and I'm reading about psychology and this is exciting. And, and then you start getting kickback. Then you start getting kickback about Asian men, which is again, one of the most ridiculous things I can comprehend because it's basically 
using excuse. You know, that's like saying if my if my marriage falls apart, it's because of BTS. That's the dumbest thing ever. Marriages don't fall apart over music, over bands, over seven men that I've never met. In fact, if I flat out met one of them and one of them dropped to his knee and proposed to me and I said yes, my marriage would not have ended because of that. But you just get really used to taking the blame for things. So when, when people start to perceive what you're being happy about as odd, you know, you end up having a choice. You have a choice to make. Do I agree with them and stuff another blanket around this? Do I wrap this up and stuff this down to you? Or at what point do I decide enough is enough and that I'm actually okay to be me, I'm okay to be happy. And in 2021, I spent the first half of that year trying really hard to discover myself and to feel empowered through BTS, but kind of secretly. I started this channel's focus sort of in secret. I didn't want my family, I didn't want my husband, I didn't want people to find out what I was doing because they were already judging me just listening to the music. They were judging me reading books because of the music. But I just wanted connections so badly, and then I found it. By the time Suizu and Festa happened, I was so tired of wrapping blankets around things that made me happy and trying to stuff it down so that other people felt comfortable and so that I could pretend like I liked and could be what they wanted me to be. I felt that empowerment because of you. I felt that empowerment because of BTS. I decided to live the second half of the year in that openness, that more fullness of, I choose myself. So I was in that place when Permission to Dance came out, and then eventually when the Permission to Dance concert in LA was announced. And I'd already said for months and months and months that if a concert was announced, I would be willing to try to go anywhere just to see them. And when the concert was announced, and I told people that the concert was happening, everyone's immediate reaction, including mine was, it's a bummer you won't be able to go. And then that night, that night, I lay in my bed, angry, and heartbroken and questioned why I wouldn't be able to go. And I pulled up my phone at 1.30 in the morning and booked a room in LA. And I had no idea how I was gonna get there, but I knew I was so finished waiting. Waiting for anybody else to dream with me, waiting for anybody else to be happy with me, waiting for anybody else to be happy for me. Anyhow, I jumped back to my accident last weekend. In the last month or so, I've been listening to Abraham Hicks. This is the controversial part. <laughs> Um, I've been listening to Abraham Hicks stuff and I don't know if you're familiar at all with Abraham Hicks or Louise Hay or any of the manifesting kind of concepts of the secret. Some people really utilize the manifesting for, you know, manifesting material goods and fine people can manifest. Think of it and see it however they want to. For me, it's just about trying to live in a more real focus. A focus of who I am and what my soul actually is saying and needs. Because that's exactly how I got to LA last year. That's exactly how I got to make that happen. And there are people in my life who've come in and like, oh, what a nice little vacation you got to take to LA. But the thing is, it wasn't a vacation. This is a step in a much bigger picture that I, I don't see the picture yet. I don't know what's ahead of me. And then I chose to do a live stream on years right here with you guys. And that, that was an emotional and hard choice. And I had to choose between coming down here and spending my birthday and the ball drop with you or being upstairs with my husband. And I made my choice. My soul, I listened to my soul, I leaned into that. And I still carry guilt about that. Like, but the thing is I've asked, you know, the thing is I've said before things that I want to do for my birthday and for New Year's and to feel connection. And anyhow, this year I didn't ask and I didn't wait for somebody else to be on board with anything. I just decided how I wanted to do it. And I'm so thankful for all of you <laughs> who, who were there during that. Just here in 2022, I've been feeling stagnant again. I can feel how easy it is to settle back into stagnation and acceptance, but that nearly killed me because I had become so withered and stagnant. I came back alive too much in 2021 to, to backtrack on that, to let that slip away. So anyhow, looking at different ways to keep going forward, I started paying attention to Abraham Hicks and some of the manifesting word I'm not exactly thrilled about, but it, I mean, it's 
it, it is what it is. We're co-creating our lives right now. If you get into it, a lot of the manifesting stuff also alludes to the whole everything's for a reason and if something happens to you you created that which i'm all for i gotta take accountability for me this is on me that is on you that is not for me to take care of the abraham hicks stuff in that capacity really makes sense to me while i was laying there on the ground with my fall i actually wondered okay well what did i manifest here part of the reason i had actually wondered that is because in the weeks, the two weeks leading up to the big fall, I had had a lot of small accidents here at the house. And every accident, like, was kicking it up a notch from the one before. It started with just spilling some coffee several days in a row, and then actually dropping my coffee mug one day and it shattering. Then I fell down the stairs, you know, the last two steps. So this pattern had already been in my head what's going on. And then last Saturday when I was at the store, I got there and everything felt off. I couldn't get the buggy to turn. I couldn't get it to move. Everything was feeling really unwieldy and I couldn't, I just couldn't, I couldn't, yeah, anyway. And I was frustrated. I even kept stopping. Like in the store, I would suddenly stop because the buggy was so much resistance for me. And I go, I think I just need to go home and call it a day and come back later. But the thing is I had driven a long way to get there. So like it seemed like such a waste of time for me to turn around and go home then without anything, without the grocery. So when the accident happened, you know, I thought, okay, well, what did I manifest this for? I at first believed it was so that I could experience the love of people and see the love in everybody's eyes as these strangers. It was so affirming and the ability to receive because I've talked here before about having a hard time receiving and being thankful to be able to receive things. And then like 36 hours or something in, I was so exhausted. I took a nap and I woke up like an hour later and I woke up a totally different person. I wasn't a person full of happiness and joy and remembering the love of the strangers and how I was able to receive that love. I woke up scared. I woke up scared of it happening again, which like 2% of that had been there the whole time anyhow. Like what if this happens again and they keep getting worse? So what if the next one is the one that actually kills me and I don't actually want to die anymore? So, but what if I wanted to die for so long that I actually had manifested that and now it's, now it's gonna happen? So I woke up just this scared, fearful person and having memories of, of my head bouncing off the asphalt. Then I was just annoyed, right? I was just annoyed. I'm 42. I should be able to walk across a parking lot without falling down and getting this injured. Like it's, <laughs> I mean, there are people who have serious injuries out in the world. There are things that seriously happen to people. That hasn't happened to me. I literally tripped in a parking lot. So how did this much damage happen? I sort of became obsessed then with the metaphysical aspect of what happened. I really wanted to try to understand what on earth that fall could mean because we as people really want meaning in things, right? I have bought and gotten rid of twice before the Louise Hay book, You Can Heal Your Life. I mean, I literally bought it, flipped through it, and then decided, nah, this isn't for me and got rid of it twice. And yet here it is now and I'm looking for it as if suddenly that book's gonna have the, the answers, but I was desperate to make some sense out of it. So I wrote down a list of, you know, the fractured ribs and the head injury and my arm. And then I started Googling, trying to find the list, her list of this body part on this side means this. And I wrote down notes for each body part and how uh, under Louise Hayes, manifesting your health, concept. She believes that if you're in an accident or an injury where you are the one who is hurt, that you're probably carrying guilt and that you are punishing yourself. I also felt like looking up that kind of information is a little bit like looking up what your dream means from a dream dictionary. And there are some symbols that are pretty uniform, pretty blanket and generalized for everybody or for most people. Really still, it's your soul trying to connect with you, trying to tell you something through the symbols of your dream. So a dream dictionary might guide you in the right direction maybe, but it also could veer you off course. So after a whole day of just researching the body part situation and what I manifested, I knew I was kind of missing something and then I realized um, I had some pretty profound revelations within my own life actually what it means and yes that I am carrying guilt and that I'm tired of carrying guilt also that I'm just struggling with being invisible 
and not being heard and not being taken seriously. When I say that I need something, not just like, that sounds fun, I want that. There are things that I need. There are things that we as people need, right? Anyway, I kind of came to this conclusion of feeling like my face. Trying to think of this in the sense of, did I manifest this fall at all? Because if I'm going to say that I did, if I'm going to say, yes, I manifested my own fall because that's what we do to ourselves, then that's telling people who have a variety of injuries or illnesses or situations in their life that they brought all of that upon themselves. And I don't necessarily believe that. But what I am willing to do is ask myself that. If, if I were to have manifested this, what was my soul really trying to say? And I kind of had this, through, through the course of all the research, through the course of everything, I had this epiphany of, I visibly needed help. I visibly got injured. Do you see me now? And I am telling you what is wrong with you and I'm telling you what I need and I'm telling you what is okay. Do you hear me now? And I sincerely thought that was geared toward the people around me in my life until yesterday. I had this moment where it hit me so hard. My soul, like even when I thought that I figured it out, like I figured it out. I cracked my code, my soul can be at peace. But it wasn't. And for like two more days I walked around and I kept hearing randomly, do you see me now? Do you hear me now? And then yesterday I was walking down the stairs and I heard that whisper again, do you see me now? Do you hear me now? Do you see me yet? Do you hear me yet? And I realized this isn't geared toward anybody around me. It's geared toward myself. How do I keep ignoring myself? How do I keep ignoring that my needs are my needs are my needs are my needs and that I am perfectly okay for needing things and I'm perfectly okay and it's perfectly, I'm still perfectly whole and okay even if I need things that the people around me cannot or will not give. Them, people around me having either an inability or an unwillingness to help me meet these needs doesn't make me wrong and it doesn't make me bad and it doesn't make me selfish. It just means I'm still finding ways to meet my own needs. And if they're uncomfortable with that, then they need to sit with that. But I need to hear myself and I need to believe that. And how much damage am I going to allow myself to go through? I nearly gave my own life up trying to smother out my needs so that someone else could stay a little more comfortable. And in the end, none of us ended up happy. You hear what I'm saying? Like, I, I know I'm all over the place here. I know some of you have been through this. I know some of you decided not to rip your life apart in order to meet your needs. And some of you decided to rip that bandaid off that wound and let that wound have sunlight and air and water and heal. And I'm somewhere in between. This is such a messy video and I'm so sorry that I'm sort of all over the place. I'm hungry to share my life, parched and thirsty and ready to experience more and to be open to more, to open our hearts bigger and more and expand and receive and to love and to touch and to connect and to know that needing those things is so healthy and normal. Anyway. This year is going to have a lot of changes. And I don't know how to get to, to those landing places. I don't know how to get through those journeys. Do you see yourself? Do you, I'm, I'm not asking myself in the camera, I'm asking you. Are you speaking yourself? Do you see yourself? Do you hear yourself? Because even when you speak yourself, there are people who are going to, people around you, people who, love you in the only ways they know how to love you, who still aren't going to see you and they aren't going to hear you. Are you going to see yourself? Do you see yourself? Do you speak yourself and hear yourself? Do you know that it's okay that you want things and need things? Recently, I've been thinking a lot about how BTS saved my life with their voices and how I know that I'm far from the only person that has experienced that. I think about the song Stay Alive 
One of the things that I, oh my God, I can't believe I'm still talking, I'm sorry. One of the things that I realized a couple days ago, I was thinking about tear again, which I did a meditation to tear last, I think maybe August, kind of the same thing where I was pouring my heart out about a situation and how BTS tear was so meaningful and impactful. But yesterday it hit me really hard thinking about Yoongi who, who wrote the base of tear himself. He wrote the foundation for it. And he wrote it during a very hard time in the guy's personal lives and career. And they were at a point of deciding whether or not to let go and move on. And to my understanding, they were pretty close to, he, he felt like it was over. And he wrote the foundation of Tear, brought the guys together to perform that for them, to share his thoughts with them in such a vulnerable, manner. He could have written it out, gotten it out, crumpled it up, thrown it away. But no matter whether or not they were going to stay together, he decided to open his heart so expansively and let them know how much his love for them was and how painful the thought was of, of them losing each other. Anyhow, all of that comes together for me to possibly just absolutely lose it during Stay Alive, but I'm going to try really hard to to keep it together for us. Anyhow, let's listen to Stay Alive. I don't know if there is an official, there's a promotion video. So the song is three minutes and 30 seconds long and the Seven Fates YouTube channel does not have a three minute and 30 second long video. So we're going to watch the um, J Gucci. That's what we're gonna watch. <laughs> This song will save someone's life. I know that sounds so dramatic.
I had not looked at I, <laughs> I had not looked at the translation of that. I'm, I'm sticking to the fact that that song will save someone's life. You know, if you're somebody who's staying alive, if BTS is part of how you're staying alive, first of all, don't feel any guilt or shame about that. And if anybody wants to make you feel guilt or shame about that, then that's just something you can't share with them. That makes it hard because you want to share what makes you feel good, makes you feel alive, but you don't have to explain any of it. I don't know how to end things from here. I don't have like magical insight and feel goodness, but if you're still here, because this is a long video, if you're still here, then, then that means you've been having rough days yourself or you're just making the space for somebody else who's having some rough days and figuring things out. Either which way, I'm thankful that you're here, that you found your way to this. I'm thankful for you. I I am so thankful for this last year of my life and I'm so thankful for the year ahead. God loves you. I love you. BTS loves you. They do everything they can to remind you and me and us that we never walk alone and that they want you to love yourself. They want me to love myself. They remind us of the magic shop, your truest, fullest life, whatever that looks like. Thank you for being part of that for me. I love you. Oh God. I love you and I will talk to you again soon.